Hi there everyone. If you're into FPV, you're probably familiar with Cadex. They make a whole heap of analog FPV cameras and the Walksnail Avatar digital HD FPV system. But one thing they don't make is bind and fly drones, at least not until now. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a new product from Cadex. This is the Cadex GoFilm 20. It's a two inch Cinewhoop featuring the new Walksnail Avatar 4K video system. And this video is going to be a review, not just of the bind and fly drone, but also of the 4K camera system that goes inside it. And we're going to be answering the question, can a company that primarily makes cameras turn their hand to making bind and fly Cinewhoops and get it right on the first time out? Let's not waste any more time. Let's dive right into it. Brief disclaimer before we begin. Cadex have sent me this drone free of charge, but this is not a paid review and they've had no influence over the content of this video. Let's start by taking a look at the GoFilm 20 on the bench. Starting at the front of the drone, we have the Cadex Moonlight 4K camera with an included ND8 filter. So you get that nice motion blur on sunny days. We also have these two little TPU parts, little bumpers to protect the camera. And we also have some protection from this uh, plastic shroud on the top and the plastic uh, of the prop guard on the bottom. The camera has a very flexible, very wiggly mount. It's just mounted off a bit of TPU. And with this much movement, I would worry a little bit about Jello. We'll have to see if that um, is something that we see in the flight testing. Moving backwards, we have a 2.5 millimeter thick carbon fiber frame that's been spray painted black. And um, yeah, you know, some parts of the frame are a little bit on the, the thinner side. You know, we've not got a lot of material around these screws and these screws. So we'll have to see how that plays for, for durability. But uh, the frame is going to be pretty lightweight given how cut out it all is. We have an integrated battery strap and a bit of texturized rubber material um, to provide some grip for the battery. And as we move to the back of the frame, we have an integrated XT30 panel mount connector held in place by a 3D print. In terms of electronics, we have a 25 millimeter AIO flight controller with an integrated 2.4 gigahertz Express LRS receiver. And below that, we have the Walk Snail Moonlight 4K VTX with the onboard recording. The flight controller is driving 1303 6000 kV motors uh, with this nice black and gold color scheme, and they're spinning two inch props. In terms of antennas at the back, we've got two little linear whip style antennas for the VTX. And personally, I would have liked to have seen something more like this, a two element circularly polarized antenna with a left-hand circularly polarized and right-hand circularly polarized element and two UFLs rather than two linear antennas because um, the walk snout antennas are circularly polarized. So you're not necessarily gonna get the best range and penetration if you're using linear antennas on the drone. Maybe that's something walk snail can look at in a future version. The Express LRS 2.4 gigahertz receiver is this T style and these have really, really good range and penetration with Express LRS. So uh, I don't have any problems worrying about the control link if they're using this type of antenna. There is a capacitor mounted just behind the flight controller to deal with any spikes in battery voltage. So overall, I think uh, it's quite a nicely integrated drone. The prop guards on the drone are injection molded plastic, they're ABS. So, I mean, they're, they're lightweight and they're reasonably durable. There's a limit to how much a plastic injection molded prop guard can take. It's never going to be as strong as something made of carbon fiber, but it is lightweight. And these are very uh, skinny, thin profile prop guards. So they're not going to um, introduce any aerodynamic effect, no duct drag or anything like that. Um, it just to, to stop the props striking on things. If you do crash with these prop guards, sometimes they can get bent into a position where the prop will rub on the prop guard. And in that case, you'll need to kind of bend them back. And as I said, they'll they'll last so long before, uh, they'll only last so many crashes. Hopefully Walksnail will provide um, spares of this uh, bottom plastic piece so that, you know, when the inevitable happens, you can, you can replace it. Now that we've looked at the GoFilm 20 on the bench, it's time to look at the camera system. And the focus of any Cinewhoop is gonna be the quality of footage that it's able to produce. And for that, we need to compare the Walksnail Moonlight 4K camera and recorder against the DJI 03 camera to see how they compare in terms of image quality. And to do that, we're gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison. That's where both cameras are gonna be recording the exact same scene at the exact same time. 
to get identical lighting conditions. And then we're going to look at how the image quality between the two cameras compares. And as I like to do in these comparisons, I'm not going to tell you which camera is which when you're looking at the footage. You're going to have to look at the image, make your mind up, and then I'll tell you which camera was which at the very end. We're going to start with bright daylight illumination. It's a very sunny day. And we're going to see how the cameras capture the same scene, looking at the color saturation, the level of detail that each of the cameras is able to provide. And Honestly, when I'm looking at these two images, I think both cameras are doing a fantastic job here. They're both recording in 4K, 60 frames per second, and we've got a nice, bright, colorful image from both cameras with lots and lots of detail, both in the shadows and in the highlights. Now let's look at the performance of the cameras in a low light, a twilight condition. And here I think there's a lot more difference in the performance of these two systems. One of the cameras is a lot brighter, better illuminated with more detail, particularly in the shadows, than the other. So again, you have to make up your mind which image you prefer here, but I think there's more of a difference in this twilight setting. Now that you've had a chance to look at the image from both systems side by side and make up your own mind, I can tell you that the DJI O3 system is on the left and the Walksnail Moonlight system is on the right in all the tests. To my mind, both cameras performed really well in bright sunlight. They produced a lovely looking image, lots of detail in the shadows and the highlights. The walk snail system was a little bit more contrasty, a little bit uh, more saturated, and the DJI a bit less so, but I couldn't pick between them. I think they were both lovely images. In the lower light setting, I think the walk snail moonlight system pulled ahead a little bit, providing more detail in those darker scenes. But please let me know down in the comments which system you preferred and what you like about the Moonlight system or the DJI system, uh, especially if you've got any uh, professional skills in photography or videography. I'd be very interested to hear your thoughts. Now let's go back to looking at the Bind and Fly drone. Let's have a look at the beta flight settings and then we're going to do some flights so that you can see what some flight footage looks like. All right, let's take a quick run through the beta flight configuration for this Bind and Fly. And we have an F405 flight controller, so we're going to be running 8K, 4K. 4K PID loop, and that's perfectly fine. The F405 is a good choice for a flight control chip these days. It's got loads of RAM and flash, so that's good to see. Accelerometer enabled, and we have an arm angle of 180 degrees, so the quad will arm at any angle. Air mode and OSD are both enabled, that's good. And we have a custom board and sensor alignment as well. So the flight controller is flipped upside down, 180 degrees on roll, and then 45 degrees on your rotated, so that's sensible. And we don't have any D-Shot beacon set. So this quad doesn't have a buzzer or a beeper on it. So we're gonna to need to use our motors for the beeping. To set that up, you're gonna to want to set the tone to three. That's a sort of medium tone. And then you'll want to tick RX lost so that the quad beeps when you lose radio signal. And also RX set so that the quad beeps when you tell it to with your radio. Everything else on this looks default and sensible. Now let's jump into the PID tuning tab. And you can see we have a custom PID tune on this drone um, with some small modifications. The master multiplier is still down at one, so this is a pretty conservative tune. We'll see how it flies. I would expect we'll be able to bump this master up significantly. Feed forward, we have a custom set of feed forward settings, which looks like the Express LRS 250 Hertz settings, which is what we should have given the receiver on this quad. So that's nice to see. Uh, dynamic damping is default and advanced should be set to zero always. Then we have dynamic idle is not set. We need dynamic idle particularly for smaller quads to avoid prop wash. So I would set that to 50 to start with. We may want to raise it even more from there. And VBAT sag compensation, I remember that this was set on uh, when I got the quad. I would always turn it off because VBAT sag compensation makes it hard to tell when you're getting towards the end of a battery. Thrust linearization, 20%, that's fine. So all of those settings seem sensible, so I'm gonna save those. Then we'll jump into rate profile settings, and we have default rates of 70, 670. That's pretty high for cinematic flying. So I'm gonna drop it to 5,500, which is more, more where you should start for a cinematic style of flying, and maybe even a bit lower than that. You could go 4,400 as well. Everything else seems sensible. We might come back and set some Throttle Expo up in the future. And if we do, I'm always going to set Throttle Mid to zero because I like the shape of curve that that provides. If I put in some Expo, you can see it makes just a, 
more throttle resolution, lower in the throttle, less at high throttle, that's what I prefer. But we'll, we'll start without any expo, so we can save that. Now let's take a look at the filter settings. And I think we can make some improvements here. Gyro Low Pass 1 and Gyro Low Pass 2 are both enabled at the default settings. With a drone of this size, you certainly don't need Gyro Low Pass 1. Gyro Low Pass 2 is an anti-aliasing filter primarily, so we are going to need that because we're running at a 4K PID loop. So we'll go ahead and turn the cutoff for that up to 1 kilohertz, which is all you need for an anti-aliasing filter. Now let's look at the gyro RPM filtering. Now I've taken a look at some black box logs of this drone, and we don't really have RPM filter harmonics with the default props, so I'm just going to turn that down to 1. And the dynamic notch filter a drone of this size very rarely needs the dynamic notch filter, and certainly in this case we don't need it. So I can turn that off. Determ low pass filtering is default, and I'm happy to leave it at that. But this is going to improve your filter delay significantly, being able to turn off all these filters that just simply aren't needed. Now let's take a look at the black box settings. And it's really nice to see that even on this tiny little bind and fly with its 25mm AIO with integrated Express LRS receiver, we still have 8 megabytes of onboard black box storage. It's not very much, but it's enough to do a, a tuning flight and maybe debug the quad if something's going awry. It's really nice to see, and it's a feature that no quad should be without. Now that we've looked at the beta flight settings, it's time to take a look at some flight footage. And this footage was recorded at 4K 60 frames per second with no image stabilization, and it's using the default factory tune that comes with the quad. What we can see is that overall the image from the camera is really nice. It's nice and bright, nice and saturated, contrast is good. But the platform of the drone is a little bit shaky, particularly on the pitch axis. And when doing sharp moves or flying through light wind, you do see uh, a little bit of a wobble in the camera. Now that's something that can probably be corrected using uh, image stabilization, either by turning EIS on and going down to 2.7K in the camera, or by uh, using gyro flow in post. That can probably help solve some of that wobble. It also might be improved by an improvement in the PID tune as well, turning that master multiplier up a bit. There is also another potential cause, which is the very flexible camera mount that this drone has. That may be exacerbating the wobble that we see in the camera, particularly on the pitch axis, because the camera is very loose and wobbly in that direction. In which case, it might be better to use a bit of foam to firm up that camera mount and avoid it being quite so wobbly. That might also help reduce the uh, vertical wobbles. In terms of flyability, um, particularly with the nice cinematic rates, the drone is very easy to fly, good throttle resolution, good throttle control, and it is fun to cruise around, but it hasn't really got the authority to do a lot of freestyle moves. Sharp flips and rolls and sharp turns lead to prop wash, which is very noticeable. Um, and so this is really a, a drone that's gonna be best for cruising around. All right, so now that we've looked at the flight footage, it's time for me to give you my conclusions on this little drone. And we're gonna start with the positives. It's a nice small drone with a small form factor. Um, this means that it's very easy to carry around, it's easy to fly, it's not too intimidating, and you can fly indoors and outdoors. The build is very clean, everything is tightly integrated, um, it's easy to get at everything, get all the USB ports and all of that, which is really great to see and makes it super easy to work with. Um, the motors are plenty powerful enough for fast cruising and even some light freestyle, but the drone does struggle with more aggressive freestyle moves, so you just have to be aware of that. The camera system on the front is really nice. You get a beautiful quality image, nice colors, nice detail, 4K recording, and you can use this footage, I think. It's, it's really good quality. And that's gonna be the focus of a, a Cinewoop like this, so it's great to see that the camera is up to, uh, up to what it needs to do. Now on to the areas for improvement, perhaps. The little linear antennas at the back, I think definitely would do better if they were a two-part circularly polarized antenna. That's what I'd like to see in a future version. The camera mount on the front is far too wobbly on the pitch axis, and that does lead to some shakiness in the video. Um, I think that's something that could be addressed with some foam or something to pack that camera in a little bit more tightly. In terms of uh, the overall Durability, I think the frame is going to be plenty durable enough. It's nice thick carbon fiber. These injection molded plastic prop guards are quite thin in section and 
plastic is only so strong. So these prop guards are only going to survive a certain number of crashes before they'll crack and need to be replaced. Hopefully Cadex will, rep will provide replacement plastic parts so that if you do get these uh, damaged, you can replace them nice and easily. So with those different pros and cons, let me tell you who I think the GoFilm 20 is going to be perfect for. If you're someone who already uses the WalksNow avatar system on some of your other drones, and you're looking to get into Cinewhooping for the first time, then I think the GoFilm 20 is going to be the perfect choice for you. It's small, it's lightweight, it's easy to carry, you can fly indoors and outdoors and it's not too intimidating. The camera on the front captures great 4K quality footage that will be perfectly usable, and you know that's going to be the ideal use case for this little guy, just cruising around capturing great Cinewhoop footage. If that sounds like it's you, then there are links down in the video description to where you can pick up yours today. And there are affiliate links, which means that if you use them, you really help me out and help support the channel and it doesn't cost you anything. That's all I have for you for today. I hope you loved the video. Let me know what you think down in the comments. And until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.